Yeah, you can start. I can use a bunch. You, you can start. Yeah, it's, 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 it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Um, so our second talk is all your DNS records point to us, understanding the security threats of dangling DNS records. Um, I was not aware of these dangling D uh, <laughs> DNS uh, entries, and it seemed to be a very interesting paper. And it will be presented by Professor Haining Wang. He is at University of Delaware now, but he told me that this work was done when he was uh, at College of William and Mary. So uh, let's welcome. Uh, not Professor. exactly. Uh, this is John work with my student, uh, Daiping Liu and uh, uh, Shui Hao. Uh, one of them affiliated with the University of Delaware, one of them affiliated with the College of William Mary. Okay. So uh, uh, we started the project, uh, yeah, it's, I think it's uh, less than two years ago. <laughs> so uh, thank you for the introduction, and uh, it's my great pleasure to present the paper. And uh, I'm, unfortunately, both of the students uh, have a problem to uh, ob obtain the visa uh, to attend the, this conference. Uh, so I have to present the work for them. Uh, because this is work mainly done uh, uh, by, uh, by these two students. Uh, so DNS is one of the fundamental internet service, uh, like a routing service. They provide the naming service, uh, mainly translate the domain name to IP address, or you know, IP address back to domain name. And every service, you need this naming service uh, to work well. And uh, uh, so basically, I, I first give you a brief uh, instruction how uh, DNS works. Uh, so if you are a client, you want to access uh, this website, and first thing uh, this client resolver will do a uh, contact your local DNS server, or sometimes we call this recursive uh, DNS server. And this DNS server play like an agent or operator uh, for you. If there's no cache uh, maintained at this local DNS server about this uh, domain, the recursive DNS server will first contact the root, root the DNS server, and then the root DNS server will delegate uh, the, the, the uh, lookup to the top level domain, uh, send back the referral, and then the local, the local DNS server will contact uh, with this top level domain DNS server. All this uh, query and uh, refer is done inter inter interactive. Uh, manner. It's not recursive anymore. So finally, uh, the local, local DNS server will get refer to contact the authoritative name server for this uh, domain, and finally get the uh, reply and send back uh, to the client. And quite often, they cache the reply at the, all the different level of uh, uh, servers, DNS servers. And then, once the client knows the IP address, uh, you can send a request uh, to the uh, either web server, file server, uh, you know, to get the service. So DNS security has been studied for a long time, and uh, like we have the DNS SAC already, uh, but the major purpose of DNS SAC is to secure the DNS communications among all those DNS servers. Uh, so, but our work is mainly focused on you have a DNS record maintained at DNS servers. But the DNS record maintained the server uh, is basically a pointer, right? A pointing to direct you to the IP address or to the physical servers. So our study is look at the problem, what happened? What happened if these resources, this physical server, is not available anymore? Either the bank, the, the, the company, or start, the startup already gone, or you, this is a web service, is stored at uh, a third party service, and they close the online store. So basically, if the resource uh, is not there anymore, and you still keep, you know, the DNS server still keeps the record, that becomes a dangling pointer. Right? So that's the problem we are focused on. So, this study is mainly inspired by this problem. This is a system security problem uh, called use after free. Right? You have in your program, you have a pointer, right? pointer to a, a piece of memory. So what happens if you refree, free this memory, release it, right? but 
what happens, you still keep using the pointer, keep using the pointer after you release this piece of memory. So what would happen? If somebody else use this memory again, the content will be changed, right? So there will be two things quite, of, quite often that will happen. Uh, the program is benign, quite often you, your program will crash. Or if somebody is a malicious person, he can really change the value and hijack your program. So similar situations, for DNS record, as I mentioned before, is also, especially you look at the data field, right? Data field here in this A record is 1.2, 0.3, 0.4, right? So this is basically a pointer direct you to the physical machines. So what happens, as I mentioned before, if this uh, internet resources, either a physical machine or hosted service, is not there anymore, your pointer becomes dangling, right? So it, it is your responsibility to clean the DNS record. But quite often, people don't do that, right? Because this, this is a startup company, the company already gone, so why bother, right, clean up? Or this is, uh, you know, I'm a, a online, I open an online store, and later on I, I, I close it, and the DNS record I, I, I return is actually also do the uh, it through a third party DNS service, like DYN, right? That's service being tagged, I think, last Friday, caused a lot of trouble. And, and often the people, they don't have either the awareness, knowledge, or motivation to clean up. So that's leave the, the problem we found out is quite widespread. And then, if the hacker knows that, and easily, especially if this IP address or the domain name, especially the same name, uh, can be hijacked, right? And they, if they can uh, obtain this IP address or obtain uh, a similar domain, not similar, same domain name, name uh, they can install their own content, right? And then later on, when you're doing DNS lookup, it's still directing you to this same IP address, but actually the content changed, the owner changed, right? That's the problem. So this is the rest of my talk. Uh, first, I will introduce you uh, the different uh, four type of uh, security sensitive uh, dangling DNS record because there's all you know more than 40 type of DNS record, and we are focusing on four type of uh, DNS record that could cause uh, security problems and how to exploit uh, these uh, dangling uh, records. Uh, basically, we found out three uh, attack vectors. Then I will show you the, uh, the measurement study we done. Uh, first, I show you how we select the domain names. Uh, you know, we cannot try to scan all domains. That's almost impossible, right? Uh, and then how we collect the data. The data, especially the subdomain sub data, because there's a lot of top problems uh, at the subdomain level. Uh, then I will show you how we search for all those uh, dangling pointers that could cause security, security problems. Uh, that's the focus of this work. Uh, then I will show you two cases. Uh, two case study uh, showing you the threat uh, posed by uh, the dangling pointers. And then I uh, give you uh, three preliminary different solutions to, make it, to mitigate this problem and finally uh, conclude this talk. So first look at the, uh, the dangling DNS record. So basically DNS record uh, have four fields uh, showing, I'm showing here it's five, uh, but, but actually the class is optional. So fundamental field is name, TTL, type, and data. And the data field is, as, as I mentioned before, it play the role of uh, the, the, the pointer, right? And, and the dangling uh, record is, means you release the resources, right? But the record is still there, and then the data field points become, the pointer become uh, dangling. And we found there's a four out of 40 type of uh, DNS record that's you know, security sensitive. 
Um, this here is a record, uh, the CNN, uh, MS, and NS. So that's the four type of uh, DNS record that's uh, security sensitive. So let's look, look at all these four uh, DNS record. First is uh, the, uh, the A record. Uh, of course, if you hijack the IP address, right, uh, uh, not a hijack, actually, it's, 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 uh, I think hijack is, is, is uh, not an accurate word, it's obtain the IP address. Don't really need to hijack, you, you obtain, right? Uh, and then the domain was hijacked. And then the, the, the dear uh, stand uh, record, uh, you have two ways to hijack uh, the domain. First, you, you hijack, of, of course, you can hijack uh, like what happens to the DRA, right? Obtain IP address and install your own server and your control. So that's the way like the, the, the first one. The second is you don't really have to obtain the IP address. Uh, you can just change control the owner, the ownership of this domain. Because quite often you look at this, this is like uh, the web hosting service and shared by multiple uh, you know, clients. Uh, they, they have like online stores, right? And uh, many different uh, uh, person, uh, they, they pay a small amount of money and get the online store service, right? But most likely, uh, the third party service, they store all this uh, online store within one domain or within one IP address. So basically you don't need to obtain IP address, right? You, don't, uh, you just claim the ownership, claim the ownership of this domain, right? Then you can hijack this, you know, www.foo.com, okay? So similar situation apply to the MS and NS record like what I mentioned, scenario for the CN record. So you can also con directly obtain IP address, you know, do the hijacking, or you can do it at the naming, do domain naming level, okay? You don't have to do it you know, at the IP level all, all the time. So this summarizes how we're exploiting the data. There's, there's two types of data fields, sorry, two types of data types in the data field, right? IP address or domain name. So that's the two you try to uh, attack, right? Either obtain the IP address or you try to own the ownership of the domain names. And there are three different attack vectors we found out. One is IP in cloud, because that is provide opportunity to obtain IP address. Before the cloud, it, it's really hard to obtain IP address that's owned by someone else. Right? But cloud service provide you opportunity, they have a shared pool of public IP address. So anybody can get a, a public IP address shared with others. If somebody used it before and they release it, and you can obtain this IP address later on, the same exact public IP address. That is the problem. And third attacking vector is this abundant third party services. As I mentioned before, you have, we have uh, the popularity of the web hosting, right? Uh, people pay small amount of money to get all, like, all kind of uh, online services. Like blog, uh, most of the blog is free. Uh, I think, for example, the online stores, right? You pay small money, get online stores. But what happens if you out of business, right? And then you just abandoned this uh, web service at this hosting party, right? But that's leave a problem. Somebody else can claim the ownership and then place their content, their store. And, but from all sides, they still believe this store belongs to the previous owner or the previous name. So the third problem is all these expired domains, uh, including the Apex domain. The Apex domain, sometimes they call also naked domain, like IBM.com, that's Apex domain. Or CNN.com, without www, okay? Just, just the domain and like the, the IBM, AT&T.com, that is Apex domain, okay? So what happens if the domain is expired? 
All right? But you didn't clean up. You didn't clean up your DNS record on the DNS servers. So people still believe this domain exists. Right? But you can register claim the ownership. And that's also leave a problem. So that's three different uh, 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 vectors, attacking vectors. So let's look at the first attacker, the IP in cloud. So basically, whether or not your IP address is exploitable depends on how your domain is hosted. So traditionally, we host the domain in a dedicated domain you know, like IBM, you know, universities, they, they have their own machine, they maintain by themselves, well managed, right? And the IP address, I get a, a block IP address, right? I own it, nobody else can get the IP address or, or obtain it through the normal way, right? If you want to do it, you have to, you know, through an illegal way to steal it, right? Hijack the IP address, like IP address perfects hijacking. Right. Oh, you can, you know, uh, like the web hosting, but they also, uh, the ownership of IP address belong to the owner of this web hosting service. Right. You also cannot obtain, obtain the IP address through legal way or normal way. So in that case, these two conventional uh, IP address, uh, the service hosting, you cannot make the IP address Exploitable. But now the cloud service is getting more and more popular. Right? And people deploy their service inside the cloud. And the cloud provide you a shared IP address pool. And any, as I mentioned before, anybody can get an IP address, right? And this IP address could be used by somebody else before. Right? So then that's the problem, make this this kind of IP address exploitable. And you can obtain this IP address in a normal way. Yeah. Paying a little money. You know, the, the cloud service, you, you, you get the IP address, you just pay little money or almost no money. Like uh, when we, I will show you, when we do the milking IP address, uh, we don't initiate a, a, a virtual machine. It costs us, costs us almost nothing. And we, we mainly do this uh, IP address milking uh, in uh, uh, two popular cloud service. Uh, Amazon EC2 and Microsoft Azure. So second, uh, second attacking vector is uh, all these abandoned third party services. So modern websites extensively use all these third party services, like people maintain or create blogs uh, in WordPress, uh, open uh, online store in Shopify, uh, for the email delivery, you use Mailgun. So here I'm showing a, a one simple example. Uh, Alice, like they, uh, like she, uh, want to open an online store uh, in Shopify. And she wants to have this domain name, this shop.alice.com, right? And that would be nice. Then he have I already have an account at Shopify, that's alice.myshopify.com. So to own this, he just, she just creates this domain name, a same name, and put this DNS record in her DNS server. Okay, quite often that's like upstream DNS server, maintain this for Alice, right? So everything works well, but Probably after a few months, you know, uh, Alice didn't do well in business, and uh, he out of business, right? She, I don't want to mention this online store anymore. Uh, she just uh, gave up, abandoned, abandoned this uh, uh, online store, but she for, forget to clean up this DNS record. Okay, and the DNS record now become a dangling DNS record. Uh, if somebody else, like Malice, knows that, and she, he also have an online account at Shopify. So especially I want to emphasize here is 
in Shopee 5, when they do this, uh, the training, right, from ls.myshopify.com, they're just using the wild, wild card to the mapping. Okay, so this is, uh, doesn't matter you are Malis or Alice or Bob, they all point to the same domain or same IP address, same IP address that's the host machines. Host, so my, one machine shared by multiple clients, right? So Malice have also have account at my, uh, at Shopify. So, and he, if he knows this is, uh, Alice already gave up this, you know, online store, he can claim the ownership. And quite often, Shopify does not verify. Okay, that's the problem. They don't verify the ownership. Okay, so Malice can claim the ownership. And because also they are locating the same server, and he can just easily replace the content that's used by, for the online store of Alice, now become, still naming is Alice store, become under his control. Okay, that, that's a problem. So let's look at the third attacking vector, that's expired domains. So for the data fields of like CNN, MS, or NS record, they all may point to expired domains. So there's a previous work uh, published this, this year, uh, mainly study the, uh, uh, the, the Apex domain registrations by exploiting all these expired uh, domains. We are more like to focus on all different kind of domains or subdomains, especially subdomains, right? Because you, if you are a big company, quite often you don't do everything by yourself. You all source. For example, the supporting dot com, right? To expire, to could be pointing to expired domains, and that could cause a problem too. So now looks looks like look like the the memory management study. We show the domain selection, uh, DNS data collection, and I will show you the the result measurement result showing. The, the dares are widely spread. A problem, a serious problem, then I, you know, uh, thread analysis. We try to choose the popular ones, because if the domain is not popular, even the domain was, the domain name was hijacked, you know, nobody cares, because very few people visit all those domains. So we focus on, try to focus on the top popular ones. Uh, four data sites we have. The number one is all expired Apex domain in Alexia top one million. And then three subdomain data site. Uh, we, we try to get the subdomains. First, uh, we get using the zone transfers from 320 domains. Uh, that's the only domains we can get zone transfer to get all the real uh, subdomain names. Uh, the rest just, you know, we disallow ours, you know, disallow the zone transfer. So for the rest of domains, uh, first, we come up with a word list based on these 320 uh, do domains, get the subdomain names, right? And, and then we, we do the proof of scanning based on the word list to see the rest. And then form the data set for the subdomains. The data set are all, all kind of, DNS, sorry, for the four type of DNS record, right? So based on the data, we do the search result. Uh, rest I will show you the overall result. Uh, IP in cloud, abandoned third party service, expired domains. So this is the overall result. Uh, so 318 days in 318 top uh, one, one uh, million Apex domains. Uh, look at the subdomains. Uh, there's 400 eight there's in 277 top uh, 10,000 domains. Uh, we also look at two uh, .edu.gov, uh, 50, 59 in 52, uh, domains, and six there's in six uh, .org, dot, uh, .gov. So that's the reason why this number is getting smaller and smaller. 
uh, first, the number is bigger, right? You have, we have it's definitely sort of one million to 10,000, and then uh, I think 2,000, uh, I didn't show the number. For the, for the EDU is about 2,000 and uh, 2,007, uh, 700, and then GAR is 1,700. And also the EDU and the GAV, dot GAV, those domains, they mainly maintain by themselves. They are not maintained in the cloud. Uh, especially for GAV, dot GAV, even they maintain the you know, cloud, they, they use uh, uh, Rackspace. They don't use EC2 or Microsoft Azure. Look at the type of domains. Uh, we have you know, news, uh, this is a short of time, I just you know, let you see this, I don't repeat uh, by word. So now let's look at uh, the memory result for the IP in cloud. Uh, so we need to make sure the IP address can be obtainable, right? Uh, or exploitable. So the first step is to filter out all this unexploitable IP address. If the IP address not belong to the cloud, uh, or the IP address reserved by a cloud uh, vendors, we, we filter out. And then we look at the IP address. If the IP address is being used right now, right, we, we filter out too. Make sure the IP address is not used as, as this moment, but still appeared in the DNS record. Right? That's an exploitable IP address. So, so this figure shows you all those potentially exploitable IP address. Potentially means is showing in the DNS record, the data we collected, right? And also after filtering, it remains in our uh, IP pool, right? That's become the potential. And then you may think how practical you, an attacker can obtain a desired IP address, right? So we, we, we did continuous milking the IP address from DC2 and Azure. Uh, what we do is just release it and then lock. We don't launch a virtual machine. So the cost is very, very low. And here the, the result we get. Uh, for EC2, we issue uh, close to 9,000 requests per day, and we get 5,000 new IP address. And so this is the number for Azure is uh, lower uh, because Amazon uh, EC2 is more popular, uh, have more IP address, the pool is larger. So. But the, the key is the IP pool is large enough for attacker to obtain the desired IP address. So here's the result. Uh, three tap, the dear DNS didn't show up, okay? Uh, so no surprise, more in the Alexa topper, top, because more you know, domain names, and uh, they have more chance to deploy at the cloud. So now let's look at the result for the abandoned uh, services. We get the DNS you know, data, right, a record. So we first, uh, we do the rank based on popularity, based on how many times you appear in my data set. I rank them, uh, then I choose top 200 non-email service and all email services. And there's two uh, requirements we look at. Is this an explorable abandoned service or not? Number one, uh, it's free account, so it costs, costs us nothing. Okay, so basically, uh, we can relax this uh, requirement. If we got you know, come more money, uh, we can register for with the money. So what I'm saying here is this is the uh, lower bound, could be more, right? The second is you, this uh, website or the web service, they don't do the verification for the ownership. So finally, we found eight non-email service. Uh, one email service, they are vulnerable, okay? And then we use this tool to automatically try the, all different subdomains to say which one we can claim the ownership for this, you know, this web, you know, website, web service. And so among these nine services, we found all of, all of them have the problem, can be explored. So third, we, 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 we check the expired domains. To doing that, uh, we check first who is, look at the response. If the response is now, we know this website is, is gone, right? Then we confirm with a good ID for redirection. If we can redress, redress to this website, this definitely is expired. 
So one thing I, the result showing there's 140 expired domains. One thing I want to emphasize here is among this expired data set, we also include those unregistered, non-existing domains. So those are not expired domains. Those are the typos appeared in the DNS record. Okay, this is also included in our, in our you know, if you look at this expired, this also includes all those unregistered and non-existent domains caused by the typos in our collected DNS record. Those information are unfortunately not included in our paper, so I have to emphasize here. So among these 140 expired domains, we found 156 DIRs. That's due to the expired domains. So the problem here is many subdomains, even with high repetition domains like .edu, you know, top domains, point to the expired domains using the same name of MS record. So here I'm showing you the expired domain patterns. So there's basically three type of patterns. Uh, patterns. Uh, first is similar to alias. Uh, two examples. Let's look at the second one. That's, that's our RPS, Berkeley, right? And the second is expired external service. And the third one is a typo. This is just what I mentioned. The typo. If they are not expired domains. They are typos when they create this DNS server because human beings make mistakes, right? And look at how possibility you can register these expired domains or these typo domains, right? Uh, the problem here is currently all those major domain registrars, they, they have a blacklist, but no expired domain on the blacklist. So you can easily register all, this, all those expired domains. And they have rules to block the similar name close to the well-known domains, but that's only prevent 46 from being exploited. So finally, I've shown you two cases is a threat, threat analysis. One is the email fraud. Uh, so currently, uh, we have, when you do the email uh, fraud, you, you have a fake email address, email server, that we can be easily blocked if you, if you use this DKIM or SPF, can prevent the email uh, uh, fraud, right? Also, it's an open loop, right? You send, a, you send a spam, but you never get a reply. But if you, if you have exploiting this, exploiting all those dear, especially the MS record, uh, you can send out all the mails, you know, scan using the authentic email server, so you can bypass the DKIM, right? And also, this is a closed loop. You send the spam, and also you can receive the reply. That's an advantage, right? So the second case I'm showing you is, here is you have this uh, subdomain support, right? For this case, the pointing to, uh, this is hosting in, uh, in a cloud, you know, uh, Amazon EC2. Uh, but currently, we look at the, you know, uh, this is what I get from the archive.org. But currently, we visit this, it actually support this directly support the subdomain to the help. But if I know this IP address, right, I know this IP address, this can be checked from the DNS lookup, I can hijack, not hijack, I can obtain this IP address and install my content, right, and then I can basically gain the, you know, gain the ownership of this support. That becomes a problem. More seriously, we found email, payment, shop, all these subdomains, that also have the same problem like what I'm showing the support. So mitigating three different, authenticate the IP address, break DNS resolution chain, check for uh, expired domains. So that's end of my talk. I think I run out of time, I apologize for that. Uh, I'm open for uh, any, maybe a few questions. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So for questions, please, um, we have to take it offline because we are yeah. over the time. Um, let's thank the speaker. Okay, thank you.